somewhere outside of Chicago. We're not allowed to tell you where. Buried deep underground, there is a room. Take a look at this thing. And inside that room. This is the treasure room door, and it's my treasure room door. <laughs> this is unbelievable. Lies pure movie magic. Wow. Come on in. Where we're going, we don't need roads. We don't need roads. Where? Back to the future. This is the Mr. Fusion from Back to the Future 1 and 3. He's on a hoverboard. Hoverboard from the second and third number film. Two. I collect this stuff because I love film. I love movies. I love TV. I love the art. I love the fantasy of it. That belongs in a museum. You have to love film. You have to love what is going on in film to learn about it, to learn how it's made, and to see all the amazing artists that produce all of this cool stuff. Avengers! Assemble. No! Collectors are very obsessive of all types of stuff, whether it's toys, stamps, coins. Prop collectors are no different than that. Prop collectors tend to come across as experts of a specific film. I don't think of myself as an expert, even though I collect this stuff, because there's so much information. Dan Lanigan is, at the end of the day, a movie fan. The Nightmare Before Christmas. This is Halloween, this is Halloween. Mostly puppets, a few stand-ins, but set pieces as well. He's made his passion his profession. He's a well-respected filmmaker and producer. But it's in this underground room, a museum to movies, its Chicagoland location sworn to secrecy, that you can best learn just who exactly Dan Lanigan is. Because while most of us just watch movies, Dan lives among them. From The Matrix, this is Keanu Reeves' costume. Arnold Schwarzenegger from Terminator 2. His 6,000-piece personal collection of iconic movie memorabilia is Nerdvana for any fan of cinema history. Here's uh, Will Ferrell's costume from Elf. Oh my god! Corpse Bride. From his collection of stop-motion models. Beetlejuice Worm from Beetlejuice, that's a stop-motion puppet. To his wall of weapons. This uh, Ghostbusters pack is from Ghostbusters 1 and 2. Harold Ramis wore this. from some of the most iconic props ever held in cinema history. That is the rock hammer yes. that Tim Robbins used to break out of Shawshank Prison. It's dark and we're wearing sunglasses. Hit it. To maybe the most recognizable black suit ever worn on the silver screen. I got into collecting because it's a way to get closer to the film. You know, you can watch the movie and that's great. You can't go out and live it. But if you have a costume that the actor who played the character and you set up in a mannequin, now all of a sudden that becomes the character. Now Harrison Ford isn't in this mannequin, uh, but it feels like Indy standing there mm -hmm. because this costume was worn on the set doing things that Indy did. And those characters are practically breathing inside these walls. Every prop, every costume, every wall-mounted movie monster is screen used and authentic. What you see here is what you see in the movies, even the bathroom. This is a working bathroom that is designed to look like the bathroom in the moon, which actually a lot of the film takes place in. I found the right uh, urinal and toilet and sink. And this door right here was one of the airlock doors from the movie. As you can see, gas may vent suddenly. <laughs> Got Arnold Schwarzenegger's eraser gun. And that heart right there is the beating heart it is. from Temple of Doom. In the world of prop collecting, the community is super strong, very obsessed, and very uh, into it. And Dan has been very into it for over 20 years, acquiring thousands of props over that time. However, as deeply passionate as this motion picture pastime is, it's also an incredibly expensive one. This gun right here, Deckard's PKD, the blaster wielded by Harrison Ford in the 1982 film Blade Runner. Blade Runner pistol. Dan bought that at an auction for $270,000. However, he does insist it's less about the monetary value of any one item and more about its deep emotional tether to his love of movies. I think the reason stuff goes for a lot of money is because there is this strong emotional attachment to it across the entire industry of collectors and film goers. Dan's collection is so vast, he's had to put hundreds of extra treasures in a storage facility a few miles away. 
For safety purposes, he doesn't want us to reveal just where in the Chicagoland area this collection is housed. And while he doesn't allow just anyone to come down into this temple of Tinseltown, he does hope that one day, everyone will get the chance to enjoy his collection. My goal is to eventually put this stuff in a museum because I feel it's important to share these pieces that when I bring people down here and they get emotional about seeing a prop. That is uh, Harrison Ford's suit. Oh my God. That means it's important and it, it's inspiring to people. And I want to give that reaction to other people. I don't want to just reserve it for myself and a few select people. For any movie fan, this is more than just a stash of stuff. It's a portal into their favorite movie, a breath of life into their most beloved characters. And maybe, just maybe, one last glimpse of a time gone by. There's a tangible feel to it. it. It's a very strong emotional reaction. And I think that's ultimately why I started collecting and still collect to this day, is my emotional connection to these films and now these pieces. <laughs>